So in part one, we talked we touched on evidence-based decision making and we talked on the six steps asking, acquiring, appraising, aggregating, applying, assessing. <laughs> Excuse me. And we talked about the HR data sources, interviews, focus groups, surveys, questionnaires, observation, existing data, artifacts. And we said it's important to evaluate the data sources for its authority, if there's any evidence of bias, sources cited, facts relevant to use, current data, and if it has sound logic. Now let's look at the common HR data sources in detail. Now interviews is a source of data and it involves asking one or more people about their opinions on a topic. It also offers the opportunity for follow-up questions. <laughs> now the advantages of interviews include a safer, confidential environment, may generate significant information. Now comments can suggest direction for further group research, which can be focus groups and surveys. <laughs> Excuse me. Now the cons or the disadvantages will be, it can be time intensive. It requires strong relationship building skills. It requires vigilance to avoid bias from influencing questions and interpretation of answers. And right here you see more advantages and disadvantages of interviews. And I'm gonna talk about just two, maybe the first two. So it's useful to gain insight and context, and it helps participants describe what is important to them. Now, disadvantage is that it may seem intrusive to the participant, and they are also time consuming. Now for focus groups, you have small groups invited to participate in a structured discussion, that's a keyword discussion with a facilitator. Now you carefully select participants who contribute to open discussions on that issue at hand. Now, the pros or the advantages of a focus group would include, it's a flexible format for discussion, it supports group brainstorming and group consensus, it enables HR to learn about employee needs and opinions, and it gives employees direct input into that issue at hand. Now, the disadvantage would be, it tends to foster group think where everyone wants to think the same way or say the same thing and not seem like an outlier or someone saying something different or divergent from what the group has um, kind of agreed upon. So that's a disadvantage. It can foster group think. And it may be difficult to control if participants go off on tangents. Um, it generally doesn't allow for deep discussions. It can provide skewed or biased results if participants are not representative of the, of the overall population. Now, the pros is it facilitates exploration. You're able to have open-ended questions, ideal for exploring new ideas and new topics. And it helps to capture participant perspectives when there's limited knowledge about that particular issue being discussed. And it also captures nuances. Those open-ended questions allow moderators to capture beliefs, opinions, or attitudes. These are often deep, multifaceted topics that are not easily captured in simple survey questions. Then there's natural language feedback with focus groups. In those discussions, you're able to listen to feedback in the employee's words or the customer's words. And you can listen to the unique words they use, as well as to the tones they use to capture the full picture. Now for the disadvantages, it's a small sample size. So focus groups usually feature no more than 10 or maximum 12 people. As a result, they may not yield a statistically significant result. And it's a limited segment coverage. So it's because of the cost of running a focus group, you will typically be limited to the number of unique sub-segments you can explore. And if you need to look at a difference across a wide range of demographics, you will not be able to do that efficiently with a focus group. Now it's difficult to capture sensitive topics. 
as I was saying, some topics may be difficult to capture um, in a group setting because they're sensitive or they're embarrassing to people and people may be unwilling to share their complete or accurate feedback and making one-on-one -on -one interviews or surveys may be more productive in those instances. Now, how do you conduct more effective and focus groups? Definitely, you want to have a plan. You want to have a context. Um, there's importance of the facilitator and the recorder who's going to manage how that group discussion goes. Then you want to use tools like mind mapping, affinity diagramming, nominal group technique, Delphi technique as well. Now, how does a focus group work? You want to determine the topic <laughs> and the goal of the focus group. You want to identify potential participants. You want to prepare a guide, so the moderator guide or discussion guide that outlines the focus group questions, and you want to choose a location for the focus group, well, and that may be virtual as well. You want to recruit six to 12 participants, probably give them an incentive for participating, conduct a 90 to 120 minute session led by a trained moderator, and then you want to analyze the session and present a thorough written or oral report. Now, for surveys and questionnaires as a source of data, now a survey is a quantitative research method, and it comprises uh, it's comprised of questionnaires with the intention to use those that information for efficient gathering of data from a set of respondents. Now, a survey is comprised of a questionnaire. But a questionnaire is just a set of questions that are typically used for research purposes. Now, a questionnaire may or may not be delivered in the form of a survey, but a survey would always consist of a questionnaire. Now, the primary difference between surveys and questionnaires is that questionnaires are data collection instruments, while surveys are methods for data collection and data analysis. Now, both are relatively inexpensive ways to gather a large amount of data. And that's a key word when you're trying to find the right answer for, you know, gathering of data. Once it's specifying large amounts of data, most likely the answer is going to be surveys or questionnaires. So they're used to gather a large amount of data from a large and dispersed group of subjects. Now, the advantages are it's an efficient way to gather a lot of data from a large and dispersed group, easier to quantify <clears throat> this type of data for analysis and reporting. Now, the cons include, or the disadvantages include, that it can be difficult to obtain an acceptable response rate. It can be difficult to follow up on data from anonymous sources. And many times you want to make your surveys anonymous so people can actually give you authentic answers. It relies on self-reporting, which can be biased. It requires time and statistical expertise to assess, sample, and compile and analyze that data. Now, the important considerations for sample um, for surveys and questionnaires as a data source is obtaining a valid representative sample. And you want to design the survey with analysis in mind. You want to ask the right questions, questions that reflect appropriate internal and external environmental factors and are mindful of language and cultural differences. Now, observation as a source of data involves observing the workplace and work processes. So this mitigates any self-reporting filters that is present in interviews, surveys, and focus groups. It can strengthen the HR professional's understanding of the work at hand and the culture of the workplace by observing. And it allows the observers to note factors that participants are unaware of consider routine or maybe reluctant to share. Now, advantages of observation as a source of data include, it provides first-hand and immediate data rather than self-reported data, which can be affected by memory and selectivity and subjectivity. Now, another advantage is it's time efficient for subjects. 
Now, the disadvantage of observation as a source of data is it requires skill to be on frame while you're observing. It requires vigilance to remove personal bias from observations. It requires experience to note significant behaviors and observations may not be representative of the entire population. Now, existing data sources, official documents about the business and culture, this could also be performance data from financial records, organizational databases, and HR information system. Those are also data sources. Correspondence and reports are also data sources. Industry data and benchmarks are also data sources. And also government websites and government institutions that are involved in gathering data, like the BLS, in um, in the United States, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, for example. Now, the advantages of this existing data sources include it eliminates the effect of observation and involvement and possible biases 